readings on page 101 in your Red Books of Common Prayer. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth stand in awe of Him. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Almighty and merciful God, it is only by your gift that your faithful people offer you true and laudable service. Grant that we may run without stumbling to obtain your heavenly promises. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Sit now to listen to God's holy word. Good morning, church. Good morning. A reading from the word of God written in Philipp Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 through 11. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave being born in human likeness and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue should confess that jesus christ is lord to the glory of god the father the word of the lord Psalm 22, verse 22 to 28, found on page 494 in our Red Book of Common Prayer. Psalm 22. Praise the Lord, 
you that fear him, stand in awe of him, O offspring of Israel, all you of Jacob's land, give glory. For he does not despise nor allow the fall of their poverty, neither does he hide his face from them. But when they cry, my praise is of him in great assembly. I will perform my vows in the presence of those who worship him. The poor shall be and be satisfied, and those who see the Lord shall praise him. May your heart live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall bow before him. For kingship belongs to the Lord. He rules over the nations. To him alone all who sleep in the earth bow down and worship. All who go down to the dust fall before him. Glory. My soul shall live for him. My servant shall serve him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Amen. We stand for the Holy Gospel. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke, the 14th chapter, beginning at the 15th verse. Glory to Christ our Savior. One of the dinner guests, on hearing this, said to him, Blessed is anyone who will eat bread in the kingdom of God. Then Jesus said to him, Someone gave a great dinner and invited many. At the time for the dinner, he sent his slave to say to those who had been invited, Come, for everything is ready now. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first said to him, I have bought a piece of land, and I must go out and see it. Please accept my apologies. Another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I am going to try them out. Please accept my apologies. Another said, I have just been married, and therefore I cannot come. So the slave returned and reported this to the master. Then the owner of the house became angry and said to his slave, Go out at once into the streets and lanes of the town and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. And the slave said, Sir, what you ordered has been done, and there is still room. Then the master said to the slave, Go out into the roads and lanes and compel people to come in, so that my house may be filled. For I tell you, none of those who were invited will taste my dinner. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise Christ our Lord. Please be seated. Words from the Gospel you've just heard 
Luke chapter 14 and the first part of verse 18. But one by one, they all began to make excuses for themselves. But one by one, they all began to make excuses for themselves. In this morning's parable, Jesus talks about the meal, and the meal is described as a wedding banquet. It's actually a text we heard before. And Jesus, in this parable, talks about the servants going out to invite or bring in the people that were invited to this dinner. Earlier in Luke 12 and 36, which we did about last week or maybe a few masses before, Jesus tells the parable of the servant waiting on their master to return. Then in Luke 5, earlier, uh, 34, Jesus tells about Levi's banquet, and Jesus refers to himself as the bridegroom and his disciples as the wedding guests. But in today's parable, it appears that we have a lesson on social etiquette. And this etiquette is ultimately about how to enter and recline at the table at the messianic wedding banquet in the kingdom. But even in understanding the parable, it is actually quite simple what Jesus seems to be getting at. Those who have been invited seem to have already received their invitation. And now that everything is prepared, the message uh, the ring bearer at, at weddings, um, or the page boy, is better. The page boy usually would run in to the church or place and say, "The bride is coming." And you notice one or two weddings I've been at. Uh, there's a little child that comes and alarms the congregation that the bride is coming. I don't know what for? She's supposed to be on time. Um, and so this little child comes in and alarms the congregation and says the bride is coming. Jesus sends out, or the, the, the housekeeper, or the owner of the house in the story, sends out his slaves to say the same message. Everything is ready. Come. And interestingly enough, people start to make excuses why they can't come. One says... He has to go buy a piece of land and go and see it. Well, who buys land before they go and survey it? Think about that. That's in the text. It says, I bought a piece of land and I must go and see it. But you should have seen it already to know that that is the, the lot that you wanted to purchase. Excuses. Okay? And these excuses, beginning with the first, represent those in Israel who were unwilling to be gathered by Jesus, especially the leaders like the Pharisees, who could not accept that Jesus was the Son of God, the Messiah, the one coming into the world. And in the end, they end up in verse 24, not even coming or tasting the dinner at all. The second excuse is, I have bought five yoke of oxen and I'm going to try them out. Interestingly enough, so you're going to buy sick oxen to do your work and then try them out even though you should have, you know, seen the animal, seen the strength of the animal. It's just like when people were buying slaves. Uh, if you know about slave auctions, nobody bought the sickest slave. You bought the slave that was most fit and had the most muscles so that the person can do the most work. That's our history. Then, there's one more excuse, and this is the one I this is the one I preach about more often. He just gets married. See, I can't come. Because I gotta deal with my wife. You see it there in the text? I have just been married and therefore I can't come. 
The slave returns and tells the master, man, they're just making a whole lot of excuses and at least two of them don't make no sense. Maybe we can understand it by the stretch of the imagination why the one married said he can't come. He just got married. But the other two make absolutely no sense. In this parable, who do you think represents the Pharisees? The invited guests, of course, are the Jewish leaders who can't accept Jesus as the way to God. God was inviting them to be saved through his promised Savior, but they made all kinds of excuses why they wouldn't believe Jesus was the Son of God and would not accept him as their Savior. In thinking about that, the first lesson for today tells us that everything has already been prepared. There is nothing that we have to do because Jesus came in human form, and being born in human form, humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross, and therefore all our sins were taken care of. Everything has been prepared. It is finished, Jesus said, and it now invites you to partake in the finished work. But there are many who make all kinds of excuses. People today make the same mistake that the people in the parable made, and they delay in responding to the invitation because they settle for second best. So, land is more important than coming to Jesus Christ. Oxen, in this case, can represent a materialism because the oxen does the work for you. The oxen plows or pulls the, the mechanism to plow the field. And so what in our lives has caused us to make excuses? And the truth is, as we read the gospel, you can think of many excuses of people who don't understand first why you come to church. Because it's an invitation. You're invited here. None of us are welcomed into the mighty, awesome, omnipotent presence of God. Who are you to stand before God? Who am I to offer anything to God on your behalf? But because of what Jesus did on Calvary, God accepts us not as slaves but as his sons and daughters and calls us to fellowship with him and with each other. It's an invitation. The gifts of God are for the people of God. The people of God are the ones whom God gives of himself. So our souls will feast and be satisfied. You hear that feast, a dinner, we're going to eat. Our souls will celebrate and we will sing. That's joy, it's happiness, glad sounds, sounds of praise to him. But many of us settle for second best. There is certainly nothing wrong with owning a farm, examining purchases, or spending the evening with your spouse. But if, you, but if these good things keep you from enjoying the best things, then they become bad things. I can repeat that because I write that. There is nothing wrong owning a farm. That means going to work, being employed. There is nothing wrong with examining all that you have in life, your purchases, or even spending the evening with your spouse. But if these good things keep you from enjoying the best things, then they become bad things. Our reality today is that we are invited to be God's children. We are invited not just to be his children, but to sit at table and recline. In Jesus' day, they didn't have chair like I just pull up the chair to the dining room table. Either. They sat and reclined. So there's always the picture of the Last Supper where there's a disciple reclining on Jesus' bosom, almost as in a relaxed state that there is nothing. 
to worry about. And Jesus invites all of us to sit with him, dine with him, fellowship with him, and recline because there is nothing to worry about. And yes, that does involve having a life of worship, deepening and developing your spiritual relationship with God. And so many of us make excuses. I can't come to church because so-and-so. I can't come to church, Father, because I have no car. But I remember when, and, and I don't even remember because all I can remember is what people tell me because I still young. But I, I can remember stories of people saying, my mama used to walk to church. My papa used to go out to church. All the children in the community used to leave at this time and we meet up and go to church together. But now we are so dependent on the oxen, the car. Now we're so dependent on, well, Father, I can't come today because so-and-so is sick. But if so-and-so is sick in your house, shouldn't you be here to be praying for the individual so by the time you return home, your faith would have made not only you whole, but them whole. Can that happen? Yes, there were some friends trying to get a sick man to Jesus and the house was blocked. They couldn't get in. So the friends cut a hole in the roof and put the man down in front of Jesus and Jesus said, because of your friends, I'll heal you. Today, God has given us many good things in life that we could enjoy. But when we start to make excuses to stay away from the things of God, the things in our lives that hold us back become bad things. This is, a, this is literally a free dinner that people were invited to. Church is free. You know, offering is not a tax in it. Let me repeat that. Offering is not a tax. If you don't have, still come. Your offering is your way of saying thanks to God because there's really nothing you can give Him that will satisfy Him. Nothing. Nothing can appease God that, oh, if I give $10, then God is going to bless me compared to the person who gives $1. No, it doesn't work like that. The only thing that really touches the heart of God is when we return what is God's back to himself, which is our very lives. And that's the invitation that we have. This invitation is extended. And here's what I love about the gospel today. If you refuse your invitation, somebody literally is going to take your seat. All right, walk with me in the text. It says that the master said to the slaves, go on the road. Those were not the invited ones. Those are not the v VIP, very, very important people. These are the people just the passerbys. They the said who figured, one day I can get to church. These are the people who say, well, I don't feel comfortable in church. These are the people who stayed away all their life. And because you didn't take advantage, Go out into the street. Think about a recent funeral we had a couple weeks ago. And the whole hillabaloo about the person not going to church. How they can have a service in the church. Which is funny to me because some of you who go to church, or say you go to church, your children are in the same predicament as the deceased. And, and it baffles me that now that we've gone out into the street and brought in the wayward, bringing in the wandering ones to Jesus, the people on the inside have the problem. And this is what Jesus means in the gospel today. He says he wants his house to be filled. It's right there. Jesus said it himself. The master wants the house to be filled. He doesn't want you to stay away. He wants you to partake and enjoy and fellowship. It's a party. Amen. It's not judgment. This is a celebration. And so many of us, the excuse makers, these were, if you notice, successful people in the story. The excuse makers, them three people who made the excuses, they were successful people because one, one of them could buy land. 
the next one got to buy a yoke of oxen. And the other one got married. These are people whose lives were being fulfilled and were experiencing God's blessings, but couldn't come to God. You see, St. Gregory the Great, one of our saints, offers an insightful explanation and application to this parable. And he says, we are invited to God's banquet and we excuse ourselves. The supreme householder who is God is inviting you to a dinner. It's an eternal banquet. But one person is given to avarice, another person to inquisitiveness, and another person to physical pleasure. And we miss out on the meal. Today, what is holding you back from accepting that invitation? And guess what? In the story, they got the invitation, you know. We can deduce that. We can deduce that they had the invitation, they were aware something was going to happen. But when it was time, they didn't come. When we think of our own parish, they got the invitation. Jesus is being preached. Jesus is being taught. The Bible is available to all. We can stay home as they say and pray and read the Bible. But are we responding to the invitation contained in the Bible? Today, remember that if all the good things keep you from enjoying the best things, and what are the best things? God, it don't get better than God. Church, with all of its problems, this is still one of the better things. In here, you can think. In here, you can meditate. In here, you can sing. In here, you can read the scriptures. In here, you can say your prayers. In here, you can commune with God and each other. In here is where we learn so that we put into practice what to live. Those are the better things. But if the good things in your life keep you from enjoying the best things for your life, then they become bad things. I pray today that all of us who are invited would come before someone else takes your seat. For remember Jesus said, for I tell you, None of those who were invited will taste my dinner. Could you imagine being the child whilst everybody else is eating around the table and you say none for you and you have to stand in the corner and watch everybody eat? How would you feel? Respond today to the invitation of Jesus. Together, we profess, I believe in God, 